So this meeting is being recorded uh, subject to Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. All right, good evening. Thanks, Charles. Can everybody hear me? I can hear you. Yes, All right, perfect. I, I can. Well, good evening and welcome to the January 2021 meeting of the Weathersfield Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, we will, just a quick note on agenda, we will go through our public hearing, which is where we'll hear the application um, staff report, hear from the applicant, the commissioners will have opp opportunity to ask questions, and then once we've concluded the public hearing, we will have a motion and then we'll move into our public meeting, which is where we, the commissioners discuss and then bring the application to a vote. So just a point of order there. Once we've concluded the hearing, that's the end of the testimony. The public meeting is a portion where just the commissioners are um, publicly discussing before the vote comes up. And then after that, we have approval of minutes from the November 2020 meeting and then an opportunity for any other business that's not already on the agenda for this evening. So with that, um, I'm already forgetting from November, uh, but oh, if our the clerk, clerk is on the line, yeah, we should. Uh, the clerk will read, will read the, um, yes. the agenda. All right. All right. <laughs> Application number 6241-21, variance from section 5.2, permitted principal uses to allow a two-family resident in the general business district, GB, by converting existing mixed-use building to a two-family residence, location 318 Silestine Highway, applicant Rosemary Amatore. I hope I got that right. Yes. All right, well, yes. good evening and uh, thank you for joining us. Um, Charles, there is a staff report on the application. Is that correct? There is Mr. Chairman. And, okay, um, so we'll begin with the, that. The, the subject property, <coughs> as we see, is a 318 Silas Dean Highway with, and we have applicant with us uh, this evening, Rosemary Amatore. <coughs> and the variance that she's requesting is uh, from section two, which is the principal, permitted principal uses, and um, that's to convert an existing mixed use building. That is a building that houses a hair saloon on the first floor and a residence on the second floor. So she wants to convert that to a two-family residential building, thus having um, one residential unit on the first floor and another residential unit on the second floor. Like I said, this is a mixed-use building in the general uh, business district, a, um, a use which is permitted uh, by the um, Planning and Zoning Commission uh, with us a conditional use special permit. Uh, the applicant currently resides on the upper floor of the residence and the uh, hair saloon as stated is on the first floor. Uh, so she came to the department, she inquired um, whether she may convert uh, this building to a two, two um, family residential building with her intention to, to move out of the upper floor, which she now um, occupies as her residence. And she wants to move from the upper floor and occupy the second floor. Uh, she has expressed that um, there's a situation with her uh, medically, which um, prevents her from uh, properly ne negotiating these stairs. And, um, <coughs> In addition to that, the, the COVID-19 situation, which is upon us, has caused a downturn in personal service business, business that um, operate on the, on the lower floor. So I explained to the applicant that the general business district does not allow a two-family uh, residential use of the property, but rather a mixed use situation. Or in another case, uh, she, you could have a 
complete uh, business operation on the property. Uh, so the applicant expressed her wish to apply for the, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, variance. Um, so <clears throat> just to give you a little background, a check of the records revealed that on July 24th, 1989, a variance was granted to establish a personal services business in the PD office zone. <clears throat> having less than 5,000 square feet. So at that time, um, the, the PD incidentally stands for plan development. So the plan development zone at that time uh, would not have allowed a business less than 5,000 square feet. So a business would have to be over 5,000 square feet. So the variance was granted to have the business less than 5,000 square feet and um, also to continue the residential use on the second floor. And three, to permit a driveway with less than the required access width. <clears throat> on September 26, 2011, uh, variance to allow a detached sign exceeding the maximum amount permitted with stipulations, number one, that the sign shall not exceed 24 square feet and number two, shall not obstruct the use of the ramp. So today, this building contains a permitted use, <coughs> excuse me, as the zoning regulation section 5.2 allows a mixed use building in the general business district. <coughs> uh, so, um, Section 10.4 of the zoning regulation stipulates that um, when it comes to a use variance, um, a use variance shall not be granted by the board um, unless the, I'm sorry, I'm reading from section 10F, which is the zoning regulations, which um, <clears throat> sets out um, requirements for variances. And it says that the variance shall not be granted, which would permit a use that would not otherwise be allowed unless the applicant demonstrates that no reasonable use of the subject property is possible under any permitted use. <coughs> and number two, no use variance shall be granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals, which would permit A, a use prohibited either implicitly or explicitly by these regulations. B, the expansion of a non-conforming use. C, any multifamily use or development by way of variance in any zoning district. D, the number of dwelling units on a lot to exceed the maximum allowed in the zone in which the lot is located. Or E, a use otherwise allowed by special permit on the zone in which this use is located. <clears throat> so section 10, 4, F4 of the zoning regulations also states that prior to any action on a use variance, the Board of Appeals shall submit the application for that use variance to the Planning and Zoning Commission and any report submitted by the commission shall be read at the public hearing and be part of the record of the application. So this variance request was submitted to the Planning and Zoning Commission at their meeting held on December 15, 2020. It was discussed and noted that this area of the Silas Dean Highway is zoned for and intended to be used for business purposes. The commission noted that over the past 15 years, numerous properties in this stretch of the Silas Dean Highway have been converted from residential to commercial uses. And, and this request would um, reverse this trend. So the commission voted <clears throat> and they provided the following report. And I quote, the commission is concerned that the request is not in keeping with the intent and purpose of the zone for this property, which encourages the presence of commercial businesses this request is going in the wrong direction and the commission suggests that the ZBA give careful consideration 
to that aspect of the application. So the commission voted unanimously in this regard. So I have attached the Planning and Zoning Commission's report on this use variance application. That's it, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Charles. And uh, Ms. Amatore, if you would just, um, for the record, uh, give your name and address. My name is Rosemary. Go ahead. I'm sorry. My name is Rosemary Amatori. I live at 318 Celestine Highway, Wethersfield, Connecticut, 06109. All right. Good evening. Um, and now evening. we'd like to hear from you in terms of what else you'd like us to know about the application. Okay. Um, I, the business has, is no longer a business. Um, it's, it's dead. It's dead. And um, I live over it and it's very difficult for me to go up and down the stairs for me and my husband. And we would like to convert the downstairs into our living quarters now since we're getting older. And, um, and if we convert the downstairs into our living quarters, the upstairs is an apartment already. And um, I've lived here almost my whole adult life and I would like this to still be my residence. And I, there's nothing I can do with this business. I've tried everything. And I've, I've, I've tried my whole adult life to put my whole life in this business and it's not a success anymore. And this is my house and I just wanna live here. This is my home. And it's just, it's just going to be an apartment over the shop once I move downstairs. Okay. All right. And certainly. Uh, Hold on a second. My husband has something to say. Oh, sure. If you would just, sir, just give your name and address for the record. Uh, give your name and address for the record. Uh, William Leonard, 318 Southstein Highway. Good evening. Uh, I'm good evening, too. I'm on disability. My concern was a uh, place was bought residential and there's residential houses on the same side, three houses down, but she cannot climb the stairs. I, I got diagnosed with cancer and we can't just go up and down and leave an empty space. And we can't uh, leave the home. So uh, we don't know we're trying our best to keep it going. Sure, sure. No, and, and certainly um, I feel, definitely feel for you in terms of the business and uh, sounds like it's been a, a life's effort um, and things are definitely challenging uh, right. in a lot of ways. And um, I'm sorry to hear about your health situation as well. Um, what I'd like to do while we have uh, the both of you, and. I'm going to apologize, everybody. I cannot uh, get my screen to cooperate. So I'm going to do a quick um, roll call among the commissioners and see who has questions for the applicant. So I'm um, just going down the list. I have Dan, if you're on, do you have any questions? Could you please unmute yourself, Don, because I can't unmute you. <laughs> All right, we'll come back uh, around. Elizabeth, did you have any questions for the applicants? All right. Um, could I ask, is it all right to ask a question of Charles at this point? Because yes. I just yep. had, a, I would just to, to get a little content. So sure. I think in the <laughs> 18 or so months that I've been on here, we've had a couple use applications. Um, do those, those all go before the zoning commission? Like I know we had the one recently with the um, the church in the agricultural zone, and I think we had the issue with the um, the uh, the auto dealership on the Berlin Turnpike. Have those do those go to the to zoning for comment? All of them, like all use applications. To the, to the best of my recollection, Elizabeth, um, the only use use variance that would have come before this board in, in, in that 
time that you mentioned would be the 105 uh, Mars Street um, Church in the agricultural mm -hmm. zone. Um, the the Berlin Turnpike was a different kettle of fish, so okay. to speak. All right. I think that what I think that one was to um, allow auto sales uh, um, with outdoor outdoor display of vehicles because um, the zoning regulations as it is does not allow the outdoor storage and display of vehicles. So that was that. And um, so to answer your question, yes, that use variance for the church did go to the um, Planning and Zoning Commission and they did make their submission. Okay, because I, I don't remember, maybe they did comment. I don't, I don't recall any, seeing any comment for them. It just, it, the, the comments in the staff report from the zoning commission just sort of struck me a little bit and I had never seen anything like that. So I kind of wanted to make sure. Regarding, um, regarding 105 uh, Mars Street, there definitely okay. was, was a submission from the- um, Okay, maybe I just didn't recall. Well, well let, me, yeah. let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. The Planning and Zoning Commission had, um, it went to the Planning and Zoning Commission in 2000 and um, 2006. I don't want to misquote the year, but the, the, when that when that uh, use bench was granted, it did go to the commission. However, you're right in saying that it did not go to the commission this time around. Okay. Because um, I just but want we to. The, we, yeah. we had the commission's input. And um, that, that was instrumental in helping the board to formulate the stipulations for the um, approval of that variance. Because I was just, and I'm trying to pull up the staff report here regarding, and I appreciate the context, thank you. Um, that the standard, um, <clears throat> is that, and I'm trying to find it exactly as you just read it. Um, ah, there it is. The variance not, shall not be granted, which would permit a use that would not otherwise be allowed unless the applicant demonstrates that no reasonable use of the subject property is possible under any permitted use. So I guess my question to the applicant would be, do you, do you believe that you can meet that standard? There is no reasonable use of the subject property? There's no reasonable use. For, 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 for the business. For the business, I've tried everything. I've tried, we've, we've tried a realtor to try to lease out this business. It's just, we've tried everything to keep this a business, everything. And we can't get up and down the stairs anymore. So, I mean, I would really, I really need to live down here. Okay, I'll let other people weigh in. Okay, uh, we'll go, uh, Jim, I know you were on. Did you have any questions for the applicants or for Charles? Yeah, Charles, so my, my understanding is that, um, so, so no, so no CUSP, um, use was granted by yourself and then is that right i'm, I'm looking at the I, regulations i just want to make sure i understand this, this i would status. not be i would not be responsible for granting the cusp it would be the planning and zoning commission planning and zoning okay the comments and then um secondly um as you may recall in my, my um report then that there was a in um 2000 and um, so this 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 came about this business came about in um, 1989 when the variance was granted to establish the personal service business um, in the zone along with the residential so so from thence it became a a, a mixed use. Uh, entity in, in, in this, um, in the zone at the time, it was the um, planned development zone. So that would have uh, remained um, until today, 
where it's a legal, I wouldn't say it's a legal non-conforming use, but it's it's a legal use in the um in the uh, general business district. So for us to grant for the Board of Appeals to grant an exemption to the GB usage, we would have to find that everything, all of the criteria in section 10.4D have been met. Is that right? Yeah, that's according to the zoning regulations, yeah. And there's six of those that are pretty detailed and we'd have to go through each of those and determine that, that all of those apply for us to grant the variance. Yes, that's according to the- Okay, thank you. I understand, thank you. All right, um, Sandra, any okay. questions for Charles or the applicant? <laughs> All right, I don't know if she's muted. Um, we'll move to Paul. Is, is, is Sandra with us? Sandra is with us? I don't see her. Oh, she may not be. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not able to get my screen to show me uh, participant Rita, list. So. Rita is with us though. And, um, okay, I, let's go to Rita next then. Rita, any questions for Charles or the applicants? Could you please unmute yourself, Rita? Sorry. <clears throat> Um, I guess my only question would be for the applicant, if there was no other way to do this, or would you be willing to not rent out the top floor or say that it was, you were looking to use it as an office so that you would have, you would be downstairs, but There would not be an upstairs residential. We can't. Well, if I live downstairs, there'd be no re upstairs residential. Why not? There's, already, residential there's already an apartment upstairs. It'd be empty it's space. It's already separated. Yeah. No, I, under, already I understand that. I'm just asking if, and I don't know how we're, our discussion will go, but looking at all these regulations that would have to be met, I'm just asking if there was no other way to accomplish keeping this a multi-use building, would you consider living downstairs but not having tenants that would reside in the building upstairs? Go ahead, you answer Is, is my question making sense to anybody? I, I don't. This is your no, to make sure that what that still wouldn't be commercial if it was uh, residing what upstairs. No one would be residing upstairs. So the thing is, we need the income to keep the house going for taxes and electricity, and insurance, but we can't go upstairs. There's two meters. I there's I, more I, than one meter. There's separate meters. There's more than there's more than two bills. We don't want to leave it empty. If I've been yeah. coming here, um, I think what Rita is trying to bring across is that could if you could flip the in other words, if you could transform, if I could make if I could make it a one family house, would no, no, I? Bear me out, please. What she's saying, no. what Rita is saying is asking you if you could. In effect, what, you, what she's asking if you could do is remove the business from the first floor to the second floor and then remove your residence and then you would reside on the first floor. That's what she's basically asking. I don't, I can't have a business. There's no business to have. Nobody gonna work here. There's no business. No, Who's gonna go upstairs? I have arthritis in my knees and my hips. I can't go up and down the stairs. So yeah. I'm on disability. It's on government disability. We both are. We're both on disability. My husband has a broken back and I have a I have arthritis in my knees and my hips and my and I have a sciatica on my on my back. So, um, Charles, it wouldn't I... make sense to have an office upstairs for myself. To, to work. For what? What's the vision of the vision? Yeah, so uh, Charles, can I ask a couple of clarifying questions then? Because the, the piece that 
um, in looking at the information. So it, this would be 10.4 section F subsection 2C that says basically we, no use variance shall be granted that would permit a multifamily use or development um, by way of variance. So we are talking about a general business district and we have an approved mixed use today. Is there, so my first question is this, given the way the situation stands today, is there a requirement for there to be an active business operating in the facility, in the building? Is it beautiful? I mean, I'm... So, I yeah, Charles, I'm wondering if you could weigh in on that. Okay. Your interpretation. You're, so you're you're asking if there's a requirement for a uh, um so let, let, let's assume so yeah, here's what I'm saying is let's if we assume that nothing else was changing and the only thing that was happening was that the business was closing. Yeah, the business. Right. Correct. But, but so, Charles, what I'm asking is if is there a requirement based on this current situation that there is an active business in operation there? Oh, okay. The answer to that is no. And the reason why I say no is, let's say Miss Amatore is living in this mixed use building. She's living, let's say she's remaining on the, on the um, second floor. The first floor business, um, there's no profitability from the business. The business is dead, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, she could see operation of the business but not materially changing not materially intentionally changing the use it could it would still remain as far as the zoning goes it would still remain as a business just that it would not be in operation or it, it could be closed for a period of time until um the situation improves with covid or whatever it's not there's nothing that says you you have to be up because what if you if the business is not coming in? If, there, if you okay. don't have any clients, then obviously you can't operate. So you would right. still be residing on the second floor, but the business use would still be there, but um, you would not have um, clients coming in. Okay, so, and so to say that a different way, if the, so, if the so, business closed and as a result of that, they then move their residents to the first floor and nothing happened on the second floor. We would not need to be talking about a variance. Yeah, but 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 look at it this way, Mr. Chairman. If, if okay. the residence moves to the first floor, what you would have on the second floor remaining is a residence. So you, in effect, you would still have two residences. It's just that one would be occupied and one would be unoccupied. Okay. So the, in, in my estimation, the unoccupied residents that on the second floor, to maintain the mixed use uh, character of the, of the property, the, the, the build, that, be, that vacant residential space would have to be converted to business. And, and that could be done. There's no issue with that. Okay, and that's the second part of my so question. I know there are logistical the question that you're asking, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, it's the second part I'm I'm asking, and I know there, are, you know, logistical um, hurdles with this. But in that other scenario you, just, you described, if if they were to convert the first floor from the business to their residence, yeah, under the current situation, they could. And again, hypothetically, the, the second floor could be converted into business space that could be rented out. But where we have the issue is in that being converted or being used as additional residential space well, to be, be rented out. Is that, am I interpreting that correctly, Charles? Correct. You, 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 okay. you could not have the second floor as a residential space. It would have to be converted. I mean... Let's, say it's uh, yeah. let's be realistic you're forcing us out of our home you're forcing us out of our home well we're certainly we're certainly not trying to do that we're we're trying to 
you forced see yourself what what up we're trying to see what opportunity we have under the way the the town regulations are are constructed um and real estate and real estate is a business um could i just come in here for one minute mr chairman yes please before we proceed let's we forget um we're still in in the public hearing section, um, I noticed that in my waiting room, there are two telephone numbers that is not recognizable by, by me. I did not receive any um, correspondence from any member of the public. One is, one's Jan. Okay. Okay. Um, and, yeah, let's, let's... and I don't recognize the other one. So, One's Dan, so there's another, there's a unknown telephone number here. Um, right, and I just want to make sure that we don't have someone, a member of the public that that's wants to, to speak. Yeah, no, actually, we'll, we'll come back. Ignore. I wanted to, since we didn't uh, get any comment from Dan earlier, let's go back. Um, Dan, if you could just unmute and let us know if you had any questions or if you were Good for the time being. Could you please unmute yourself, Dan? Uh, I believe the issue is he can't unmute himself. He's on the phone, so he needs to be let into the room so he can ah. speak via his telephone. Yeah. So I All need. Right. To, what do I need to do? Is there a lobby? Uh, uh, you you, you would need to let Dan into the Zoom via his phone. Okay. <laughs> Are you there, Dan? <laughs> All right. Let me try this other number. Are you there? We don't. Not to you. Okay. <laughs> Please unmute your microphone. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yep. 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 Yep earlier. Paul, are you there? Did you have any questions? I, I am here, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I, I just wanted to, uh, to um, I guess, clarify something here. I'm Because listening to everyone and the applicant, it sounds to me like the applicant has no intention of um, putting that second floor into, making the second floor into a business in order to maintain um that um to maintain that that that, that use you... of that build of the building uh because earlier in the comments it was mentioned that they were seeking to get income from the second floor uh which uh alluded to the fact that they were it seems like they were looking to possibly rent that as a residential space um my my questions here is, uh, I guess, is the applicant saying that they have been unsuccessful in getting any anyone to uh, rent the space that via, uh, I understand they said the hair salon downstairs is, that business is dead, understandable with COVID and everything that's going on. No one really is going to, um, whether it be barbershops or hair salons, a lot of them are suffering. So I do understand that part, but it, has there been any attempt to possibly uh, look into the, the, the second floor being uh, possibly rented to uh, uh, some form of a business uh, that would use that for office space? And, and my question to you, Charles, would that be allowable? And, and would that also keep the, um, the building conforming? Yeah if that was done. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So that would, that would um, in effect, maintain the, um, the mixed use status of the property. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm understanding from the applicant that it would need to be a residence in order to get some kind of revenue from it. But um, it, it could be, it, you know, if, if the board rejects this this um, residential use, they, they could re they could possibly find um, not necessarily a, a, um, a hair salute because as it is now, the owner 
occupies the first floor. She owns the business, which is the hair salon. So the only difference is that she would not um, be in control of the entire business. She would have a tenant on the, on the second floor with, with, with another, with a separate business. Thank you for that, Charles. And um, I guess to the applicant, I would like to ask, uh, would they be willing to possibly rent that second floor to someone that would possibly looking for office space that would probably be interested in that? We want to keep us a family. We want to keep us a family. We want to keep it we want to keep it. It's like a lot of just a lot of people knew they, they build a noble thing or apartment down the end of the South Sea Highway. They think we see it. They can take a family. Okay? All, 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 all people live there. Okay. Can a poor family over here? What's yeah, why can't? Yeah. Just make a series. You can do one or the other. Huh? So I'm, I'm, sir, uh, is there. That's. That's my and father. He owns the house too. Yeah. I'm, oh, okay. I'm sorry. We didn't catch his. Uh... That's my father. That's Gabriel Amatori. My name is Gabriel Amatori. Uh, good evening, sir. Yes, how do you do, sir? My question is: Is it, why can you let it, people, no matter how you up upstairs, anybody else, we, we want to make a residential, better business. Business is no work. We pull money out of the pot all the time, and they they are. I, I understand. There's a lot of other office spaces around. People over here starving. Nobody got nothing over here. We're, we're going to collapse over here. You got some kind of income. You bought the house it, first. It was for residential when I bought I did all the change over here. I put my daughter in business. And then and, 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 and 87, 1987, I bought it. 1986, was, we went into business. 1986, 1987, I bought this piece of property for you. Okay? Yeah, I made all the change. It was the people who live over here. Now we can come back again. You just can't keep it through room up stairs, I can put another three room up here. Yeah, yeah. Each single house, we can live in a level of floor. We've got a handicap and everything else. And use the private as, as you would buy, is no difference. Why you give us hard time? It. Because we bought it. Not, not, not a lot of people live. What's the difference if there's another family up stairs, another family over here? Legal and legal, they're going to kick us out, really. We give our time for no reason. Simple as that. Nothing to do over here. Just go take things out. The practitioner put better the best. Simple as that. We, we, she tried to get a little money because she's disabled. You cannot leave with such a skill alone. And uh, I'm 87 years old. I'm retired too. But give us a chance. Give her a chance to live. You live, you will live. Every living to get. You know, give her time. You make it. Biggest story in life. But the like, neighbor man, doesn't mind. Knows, you know, John next door doesn't mind. He says he'll give you give you a the letter if you it. want. The whole thing. The is, financial is, guy says he doesn't mind. It's not set up for an office. We're yeah, not it's not set up for an office. Yeah, it's a full kitchen and one bedroom. Okay, and, and, and it's set up so what we um in. I, I think I can um, hopefully speak for all the commissioners. Our, our intent this Thank evening you. is not to to give any give you a hard time or, or try to make the situation more difficult. And, and we certainly are um, sympathetic to why you're here. Um, one of our challenges as we read through is that, um, and you heard Elizabeth allude to this in her question initially that there are some things that are much more straightforward uh, for us in this case and, uh, the, and than what we have sometimes with other applications. So we appreciate your discussion of it. Um, I wanna move for a second, if we can, Charles, you mentioned there were other, potentially other um, callers on. So can we do a uh, quick check? Do we have anybody who's on the line who wished to speak on behalf of this application? <laughs> Well, we took them away. Well, else? Oh, that, anyone else? Oh, hey. Charles, have you identified any additional numbers that are dialed in? Um, I think we have a number that's um, that's not accounted for. Uh, we sh we we have six commissioners. Um. And uh, myself, Julie, and the applicant, that's nine. 
but we have uh, three, six, but we have like, and then we have Julie, so that's, so we have one um, slot that's not accounted for. Okay, uh, so if you are so telephone with number us. so telephone number zero zero four. That's a is that accounted for? Uh, Seven zero zero four is me. Okay, Dan. Oh, that's you, Dan. Okay, All that's right. Dan. So, okay, okay. So that takes care of that, and and six zero two nine. Six zero two nine would be Paul. I no. Six zero two nine is not accounted for. Okay, um, so we'll give if uh, if you're on as six zero if you're the last four nine, digits are six zero two nine. If you're hearing us, can you unmute your microphone, please? We just want to make sure if you're on the line, you have an opportunity to speak. Are you there, six zero two nine? Yes, I'm just listening. Okay, you, you didn't wish to speak. Oh, nope. you're just listening here. You don't wish to speak? No. Okay. Okay. okay thank you. Uh, all right. And Charles, to clarify, I believe you made the statement earlier. You did not get any um, comment from other residents in regard to this application? No, Is Mr. Chairman. I've not, I've not received okay. any kind of... Um, correspondence from any interested party. Okay. Um, Ms. Mrs. Amatore, I think you started a reference uh, having had some conversations with neighbors and things. Can you uh, tell us more about that? Uh, John next door at the Life Financial build Building. He said he has no um, problem with issues with us making it a two residential building. And he said, if you would like a letter from him He'd be more than willing to submit one. Okay. All right. And um, were there any other discussions you had with neighbors? No, he's the, the only one. Okay. Okay. So you didn't hear from anybody who was opposed to it? No, I haven't. Okay. All right. Um, let me go, let's go one last pass among the commissioners. I'll give a minute here if any commissioners wish to add any comments or ask additional questions. All set from my side, thank you. Okay, thanks, Jim. One more time on commissioners. If, uh, if you're asking a question, you're muted. If not, uh, give it a second, all right. Uh, Charles, anything from the staff perspective that you want to add that we have not covered? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, I think I pretty much um, set out everything that's um, relevant. Okay. Um, and let me then go back, uh, Mrs. Amatore, do you want to um, close us out on this portion of the, of the discussion? Anything else you would like to add? Anything you'd like to add? It's just, no, there's nothing. I mean, I've tried everything. There's nothing. Yeah, I've tried everything. Shop local, everything. I've tried everything. Okay. what I got to say. Tried everything. What Jim? Would, yeah, we're just we just trying our best. And why can't we do legal? We got to do something illegal. We just want, want yeah, we just want to do it by the rules and just we want to do legal. Just do it legally and come downstairs. I mean, it breaks my heart. I've never closed my business. It breaks my heart to. It's the close of an era. I've never. I've been twenty. I was twenty when I opened up my business on the South Dean Highway, eight hundred four South Dean Highway. I'm fifty five now. I don't know what I'm gonna do. You know, with yeah. medical issues. I've done everything. I've tried everything. 
And so that's okay. my father. He's yeah. kept me going. If it wasn't for him, yeah, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you um, for the comments. Thank you to the commissioners for your questions. Um, if there are no additional questions or comments, may we have a motion to move from the public hearing or to close the public hearing on this application? So moved. And we have a second. Second. All right. So moved by Jim, seconded, I believe, by Rita. Um, all in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. We will move on from the public hearing into the public meeting. And just a reminder this is our, the commissioner's opportunity. Um, to discuss and then ultimately um, move to voting. There will be no additional testimony that we will hear at this point. Uh, may we have the clerk read the first application in for the start of the public meeting. For application number 624121, variance from section 5.2, permitted principal uses to allow a two family residence in the general district business district GB by converting an existing mixed use building to two family residence, location 318 Silestine Highway, app applicant Rosemary Amatory. Okay, uh, with that, we are open commissioners for discussion. I will uh, just start with a quick comment. I have been at this for uh, pretty sure more than a decade at this point. And this is one of the more, uh, in all honesty, one of the more challenging applications that has come before us in my time, um, both because of the um, situation uh, that the applicants find themselves in and also in what appears on paper to be pretty straightforward um, direction that we are uh, either permitted or not permitted to take. Um, so I will yeah, I, I'll, I'll open with that and, and pause for somebody else to weigh in with thoughts and comments. Hey, Dave, it's um, Dan. Just uh, I'm going to sit this one out because I missed the applicant's opening remarks. I wasn't oh, okay. um, able to. Okay, so for voting purposes, I'm going to sit this one out. Okay, thank you, Dan, for that clarification. So, um, and Charles, just a, a quick point on that. Sandra is not on tonight, is that correct? I believe that's correct. So that, uh, that would mean with um, Dan sitting out the vote, uh, Rita and Paul will have both of you participate yeah. in the voting. And, and obviously Dan, you know, you've been with us, you're um, encouraged to uh, participate in our discussion, but appreciate that clarification. So we have a farm um, requirement. Yeah, so we should that with both of our alternates present, we'll have five, which is our normal voting number, and uh, need four for approval, four uh, four affirmative votes for approval of the variance. Um, okay, any other anybody else in terms of discussion? Um, I'll go. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. I. Totally agree with uh, your comments about it being so difficult. I mean, if we look at the regulations, it's it's a, a no, and there's all kinds of things about hardship and what constitutes a hardship. But um, I have a question for um, Charles, I guess. Uh, there is a section in here um, under uh, procedures for 10-4 uh, procedures for Zoning Board of Appeals. And it says when a variance is granted, there can be um, stipulations put on it as we have done before. Um, is there something like that that might help us out here where this wouldn't travel with the property, but only with the um, applicant? 
if um, we if we did vote to not go along with planning and zoning and give a variance. These are people who ever sold it because they bring it back. To yeah. Oh, and, and okay. yeah, and I, I'm sorry. We 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 have to uh, limit any additional uh, testimony at this point. But I don't know, Charles, did, were you able to hear the question? Yeah. Um. I'm I'm not sure. I. I understand the question, but I'll attempt to, to answer. Um, you want me to ask, want me to ask you again? Sure. So if, if we gave a variance, could that variance have time limits on it? And such it would only apply to, for instance, if the applicant was still in residence or in other words, that it wouldn't be forever for this property because we want this to eventually be a business zone. You may attach um, stipulations, of course, to, to um, any variants granted, and I think we, you could possibly um, have, have a, a time effect as well. Um, they could pull back I to call that, that, was, that was not a Parents as such, but there was a decision made in um, I think oh, it was January of last year yes. where um, I think it was an appeal uh, yeah, where uh, the appellant yeah. had a time yeah. period yeah. within yeah. which to um, yeah. to make yeah. to make good his. Um, yeah. Charles, can you can you mute the applicant? Um, cause I, I, you're going in and out. I can't hear you all the time. Okay. I'm unable to move, but could you mute your microphone please? So that we don't have that distortion. So, so yes. Yeah, so again, I'm saying that you may attach stipulations to any, um, any variance that's granted and it could have a time, um, it could have a time. Uh, limit as well, um, but please bear in mind that the, the 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 variance must run with the land and not with the applicant. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um. I I still keep coming back to. Uh, and again, I think I'm getting my sections correct. It's. Uh, 10.4 F, and then we go to 2 C. Um, you know, no use variance shall be granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals, which would permit any multifamily use or development by way of variance in any zoning district. Um, that said, not being a um, not being on the planning and zoning commission and uh, not being an attorney, um, I am not 100% sure I am interpreting that correctly, but that seems to be what we would be. Uh, I mean, that, that's essentially our choice. It's um, if we, so, so that's what we'd be so, permitting if we were to so, approve so. the variance. So, so what it is saying, Mr. Chairman, is that you may not permit a multifamily use or development by a way of variance. So you, you could not you could not grant a variance for a multifamily use or development in any zoning district. Um, and I guess by that, uh, whether it be six months or a year, I guess the time factor would not really matter because it says you may not. And if it says you may not, you you couldn't say, well, okay, I'm only granting for six months. It, it said you may not, it didn't say, like you have a yeah. you know, stipulation that says, except for a certain time, you know, it, it, it says clearly and unequivocally that um, you may not grant a variance. Yeah, and the, um, the other- in a, in a um, zone. I'm appreciative of the other uh, comments and questions that are exploring possibilities here. One of the challenges with a 
a timeline stipulation is if wait that seems to get challenging if we are saying yeah so if there is a tenant that ends up being on the second floor from a residential perspective and we have a time constraint on that that is dependent on you know additional approval of variances we could be challenged sure. there um yeah. i have a question um yeah just just let's run through a hypothetical, Charles. Let's say that we deny this based on the strict reading of the law. What happens next? What what discretion do you have in terms of enforcement? If if this variance is denied tonight, it simply means that um, the applicant has to maintain that um, that mixed use uh, activity, that mixed use building. Um, and I think I mentioned it before, that is not to say that she could not possibly move the business to, to the upper floor, but it's just that the property has to be, um, the building has to be mixed use. Yeah, and then let's say that doesn't happen. What, what happens? Let's just play it forward. So, so if the variance is not granted, if the variance is not granted, the applicant will continue to, um, occupy the property as um, as a mixed use with, with residents and, and business. And we're, closing what the business. Mm-hmm. we're closing the business. You know, business. Okay. Okay. There's no pardon. And, and let's call it. I'm closing the business. Very close. Out. There's nobody. There's no business. There's nobody. You can have. God, not a miracle if it already There's no business. But the thing is, if you close the business, if you close the business, then um, the property, the property is still a mixed use building. It's still a mixed use building, even if the business is closed. You know what I'm saying? Even if the right. business is vacant, it's still a mixed use so business. How do you buy the property? Part of it how do you close the it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't automatically you closing the business doesn't automatically revert it to a hotel residential with two units. So one we, unit is gonna be but I'm only one Charles unit. Is, what I'm saying yes. is that only one unit can remain residential. Do you have the ability to waive enforcement, Charles? Pardon? Well, I'm asking a slightly nuanced question. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's say that hypothetically there's non-compliance with the variance. Let, let's say we deny the variance and there's non-compliance. Do you have the ability to waive enforcement? Um, <laughs> generally speaking, um, the, the question is that generally speaking, the zone enforcement officer may waive enforcement depending on the circumstances. In the circumstances like this, I don't think I would be in a position to waive um, that authority okay what are what are the penalties for what what types of penalties do you enforce is it a fine it would be a fine it would be like a cease and desist order to cease and desist the legal use and if that's not um complied with then there there comes um fines court everyone's trying to comply type of thing i just have a quick question you seem to have lost the chairman Um, i don't know if he's trying to re-enter the room (laughs) <laughs> Let's look. He will be back shortly, hopefully. I don't think he has abs- absconded. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure he wasn't in the waiting room. There we go. Could you turn yourself around instead? Okay, I've got Dave sideways. I, I don't know if I can do it. Me... Okay. All right. There you have it. All right. And then I was talking into mute just now, so I uh, had to change the headphones. Yeah, sorry about that. I had to change headphones and it booted me out and I was just about to email uh, to see if I could be let back in. So I missed the last probably two to three minutes of uh, conversation. 
Would, so, would Mr. You... Chair, if I may. Um, yes. So I am looking at, um, this is zoning reg section 10.4 and in, in F where it says additional requirements for variance. Uh, from my understanding here, it isn't saying that we can't, but it puts a burden on the applicant to prove that there is, that the, that the space or the building essentially can't be used for any other purpose uh, for, in order for us to grant that. So um, I guess my question to you, Charles, is uh, would be what documentation or what would they need to provide to, uh, to prove that there is absolutely no other business that can be put in that space in order to approve this variance on the second floor are you kidding me are you really i mean kidding? So i i second really floor is one kitchen one bedroom are you kidding me you right. you get... you I don't know. Know. so we're, we're, uh, we're... and i don't know if Sorry. you could to the applicants, if we could ask, uh, and, and we certainly appreciate. It. We're we're trying to go through and, and understand you know, what options we we have. So if we could ask, um, if you'd be able to mute your line just so we can hear back and forth um, when we Charles is attempting to ask questions or answer questions. Thank you. Um, all right, Charles, did you hear the question from Paul? Yes. Um, in, in answer to that question, I, I don't know if it would be, and I don't know if it's for me to, to say, um, but the applicant would have to, I don't think I can ask the applicant to, 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 to give the board proof in, in, in a kind of document. I mean, it's up to the, Africa, the applicant, the applicant could possibly, um, and I'm just saying this, the, I'm just throwing this out. The applicant could possibly do some kind of um, study to, 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 to say, to see what, um, you know, they have these kind of economic studies that one could do, that economists do to see the viability of a property, whether it's viable for um, one business as against the next, or what, what the demand is. Um, what the demand is for certain types of businesses, you know, and and that's um that's something that the applicant could could yes, Elizabeth. Yeah. So, so I I would just quickly regarding Paul's comment, I'm looking from the document on the zoning use variances. And so it does say that one under F, it's F1, right? Additional requirements for use variances were under 10. That's where we are, right? 10, yeah, 10 for F1. A variant shall not be granted, which would permit a use that would not otherwise be allowed unless the applicant demonstrates that no reasonable use of their subject property is under any permitted use. But then the second one is a two. We under two, no use variant shall be granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals, which would permit, there's several ones, but the relevant one here seems to be C, any multifamily use or development by way of variance in any zoning district. So that to me seems pretty directed. And also, um, also A, a use prohibited either right. explicitly or explicitly by these regulations. So it and, seems um, to me that they could demonstrate that, you know, they could probably make some sort of proper to, to get out of one, and I don't know if anyone else wants to interpret this, but the two the the requirements those five requirements under two um seem pretty cut and dry that there's no you know there's no burden they could meet that would allow them to that would allow us really to grant a variance that would result in any one of these five things that's my reading of it i don't know if anyone else wants to yeah the, the the challenge becomes uh in in my view and i um it, as we get to the commission's um, input that they gave us, um, they didn't, even in their unanimous uh, commentary, did not seem to necessarily take that 
interpretation. So I, I, I'm not disagreeing with what you're seeing and how you're interpreting what's written. Um, I just am finding myself in a little bit of a perplexing spot, honestly, because of um, the fact that it is here in front of us. It would appear that we have some leeway. So Jim, I'm sorry, I think I cut you off. Um, I was trying to do some research here, trying to figure out, are we the last resort of appeal if, if this is you know, denied, I, I think they have a right to go to superior court after us. Is that right? Yes, you're absolutely right. They could do that. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought. I was thinking. Yeah. That, um, so if, um, Charles, I want to ask a question, um, and I don't mean to interrupt your train of thought, but it has been rare in my time on the um, on the board, but we have had instance where we have um, tabled uh, an application to allow the board the opportunity to seek additional input. Um, I'm given where we are and the fact that um, we're, we're all as commissioners trying to figure out and interpret, I um, am wondering if that is something we may want to consider. I'll just, uh, I'm not moving that officially yet, but I'll just um, offer that if anybody else has a perspective. I, I would support that. Um, I think we're definitely in a difficult situation here. Um, I'm having trouble finding a way that we would be able to grant this variance. I would like for us to be able to find a way to be able to help out the applicant. But I think that if we could have a little more time to reflect on this, I, I would not like to make sort of an off the cuff. I mean, not that it's an off the cuff, but, you know, yeah, yeah. Did a little research on it before, and, but I think that this um, is something that I would be more comfortable with if we had the opportunity to give it a little more thought. Uh, you Charles, see, you see, um, in this day and age, the, the business climate is, is very fickle. It's it's not um, like in days gone by. Um, so so um, it's not to say that the, the applicant may not be able to find an, an alternative use um, for the property. But it's just that, again, in this day and age, resi in, in her mind, residential and I might sound like I'm speaking for the applicant, but I'm just saying, in her mind, residential might be the only viable business or the most viable business today. What else, you know, that would bring in revenue because otherwise she would have to have it just, just sitting there. I mean, I'm just saying, but um, I, I'm not, you know, by any means trying to- um, Yeah. Um, to, to, to speak for the applicant, but um, but if you bear in mind um, all the points expressed in section ten point four, um, including uh, the commission's um, submission, then um, based on that, you can make your um, your own. Um, the board can make its own um, decision based on that. So, Mr. Chairman, if you so wish, you may. Um, you may table the, the hearing until um I have, a I have a question about tabling it dave in terms of what are we going to look into between now and when we take this up again because i think we're in such a difficult place because i'm not even on on 10 f i'm on 10 d and it says no variance um shall be granted by the board unless it finds all of the following. And there are, I think Jim, Jim might've brought this up in the beginning. There are tons of them, but the very first one says, the circumstance has to be peculiar to the land or building and not generally applied to all the land or buildings in that neighborhood or in the district. I don't I mean, it's, what are we going to investigate and look into or get a legal opinion on between now and when we come together next time? As a fair question, um, in my mind, as I thought through it, it was... Um, no, I mean, I, I would like to table it because I don't, yeah, want, I don't know no, what to I, make. 
for a decision. And so I think we have um, in a way that we don't often have with some of the applications, we have a host of sections that are applicable here that all have requirements. And I would, my impetus for proposing the idea of tabling would be to allow us to work through and and I would actually I would like to seek some additional um, guidance from planning and zoning um, to understand more I know we have their statement we have their input but uh, I would like to have us seek some specific input around some of the um, the different sections that we've highlighted as we've been discussing this evening so that's what's in my mind is um, we may not yeah we've we've closed the public hearing so we won't be bringing any new testimony into the mix but at least it would give us the opportunity in my view to fully vet all of the pertinent pieces of the zoning regulations and where relevant get additional input from planning and zoning and and if we deemed anything necessary of a legal opinion to do that okay um the planning and so, zoning commission if you go to the minutes charles where they discuss this there was quite a discussion right with planning and zoning i mean you just you gave us their little what they voted on but there was quite a back and forth at the planning and zoning if anybody wants to go to the minutes you can yeah, read yeah and that, that would be something that uh yes. and and i applaud yes, you for doing it. i have not read uh, check the minutes and um yeah what transpired but um so I I am gonna um yeah. well, go ahead Charles you want I don't want to cut well, you off well, actually um this uh this submission from the board I, I, I didn't compile uh, um I was gonna compile my report um based on what you know um maybe more than what this says um but this was handed to me by the liaison for the Planning and Zoning Commission. So since I got, so I just used it as the um, mm -hmm. input from the from the Planning and Zoning Commission. I didn't go into the details of what was discussed, but I mean, yeah. you, you, it might be worthwhile to take to take a look at what was discussed and um, see where the board is coming from. Could could we yeah. also think about perhaps? Um, some stipulations that we might be able to put on any decision that we do make that might help the applicant. This is one of the things now that you when we meet the next into. time. That's one of the things that you have yeah. to kind of look into too. If there might, if a, if any stipulation might be worthwhile or um, you know, or, or legal. Um, if if we yeah. had some ideas about stipulations, Charles, is it something that we could? give to you prior to a meeting as if it needed a like a legal decision or yes um you, or is that not not <laughs> the way that you can do these meetings i i know there are certain rules about public yeah you, in public. you may want to think think about getting a legal opinion too because um if you make a timeline stipulation um that might work too. I mean, that yeah. might be, that might be a good way of um, compromising, for want of a better word. Um, you know, by saying, "Okay, you could do that for until such time as um, COVID goes away, or whatever." Yeah. The case may be. <laughs> so I, I think that's that's because I'm kind of reading that. That's where you're coming from. Is some kind, you know, from some kind of timeline that, or oh, you may do this. Based on the current situation with the economy and the business climate and everything, you might want to grant the, the applicant some kind of a, um, leeway and not to be so so rigid. Yeah. Just yeah. Just so be, um, until such time that. Yeah. Yeah. I um and just I, I'm not convinced that um, at least in my head that we're going to fully get all of that squared away this evening. So I want to make sure I give uh, I know I've heard from a couple of commissioners. I just want to make sure um, if anybody else uh, commissioners have any 
feedback they want to get before we potentially entertain a motion. I just have a quick question, Jim, something that James asked earlier. So I'm, I think we established that if we were to deny the variance, the applicant would have a right of appeal to Superior Court. Is that correct? That's my understanding. That is correct. Okay, if we were to grant it, is there a party that would appeal the granting to Superior Court? Is that that is also that possible. Have? That's also a possibility. And that would be the town, or who would that it be? It could be anyone for that matter. Okay, okay. But anyone who, who I assume would have standing in a court to challenge the. Yeah, the co uh, for example, uh, Charles Charles would be a commissioner who would have standing to challenge it. Okay. All right, because I just okay, want to make so, sure. I don't know. Because, I mean, yeah. The planning zoning commission. Well, I I don't want to say anything. I don't want to speak for the planning zoning commission. But they they gave their their um their ruling on this their decision. And like like the the, re the regulations say um it should be it should be submitted to the to the planning and zoning commission and um you know for for their for prior action on this and um, their findings should be submitted to the commission, to the board and to be um, read as a part of the record of the application. So, there is an yeah. so the commission are... really has a, has a, you know, has a strong feeling about this in my view. Okay. Well, I'll, I definitely now want to read the minutes to see the strong feelings about it. But the reason I ask is because I feel like in generally we are deciding issues of sort of fact that are within our discretion as the zoning appeals. And I feel like this is more than any other application I've seen a question of the regulations. And I feel like that we need to be mindful of the fact that whatever the outcome we determine, because it seems to be a question of law it, or you know, an interpretation of the regulations, it could go beyond us. And even granting the variance, if it is not done properly, could be a pyrrhic victory for the applicant because it could get subsequently reversed if someone was standing for the challenge. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's an excellent point. I'm always hesitant to kick things up to court too because you know, it, while it might relieve us of the, the us four folks of the pressure of having to make the decision, it can result in hundreds of thousands of dollars that our neighbors have to fund. And I, I hesitate to do that just because we feel like we're under a tough, you know, a tough decision. <laughs> yeah, and, and and that's a good point as well. I mean, certainly, you know, we all signed up for this, and um, you know, we we have ultimately a decision to make. I think just where Eileen is. Um, this is one that the couple of days we had in advance with the materials um, don't feel quite adequate to me uh, in terms of fully vetting and preparing and uh, making that determination. So that that's where my leaning would be. And, and, and Rita, I appreciate your question earlier because that's perfectly um, the right question we should ask if we are going to consider tabling, what is it we think we're gonna do in that time? And I think it's, uh, for me, it's, a uh, full review of the relevant sections of the zoning ordinance. It's full review of the minutes from planning and zoning, and it's uh, potentially seeking additional feedback if they will provide it. And um, and if there is a, a question of legal interpretation uh, that we feel like we need to, or would like to request opinion from the town attorney, I think that um, would be a relevant use of that uh, additional time if we were to go that route. Sounds good. Yeah, that, that makes sense. All right. So with that and with the interest of uh, time for this evening, because um, we've graciously had the applicants with us for um, over an hour as well, I, I'm going to make a motion um, that given, uh, given the complexities of what's before us, um, that we move to table the public meeting with regard to this application until next month's Zoning Board of Appeals meeting uh, to allow for additional investigation and uh, information seeking by the commissioners. I'll second that motion. Yeah. 
Um, and I should uh, I, I probably I, I, let me I'm sorry, let me amend the motion just to clarify that we, we do so without any prejudice or, or penalty toward the applicant that this is for benefit of the commissioners to um, get more information. So uh, amended motion if you want to second that one. I second it. Okay. All right. Uh, and uh, Dan was going to sit it out so everybody else uh, will be voting all in favor of the motion to table. Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so what we have agreed to do is table and continue the public meeting respected to this application until our next monthly meeting, um, at which point um, just, you know, as we said in the motion, it's the public meeting, the public hearing itself has been closed. So we will come back together and have more discussion and um, come to a vote around the application at our next meeting. All right. Um, and that brings us to the remaining items on the agenda. We have uh, minutes from November. And as I look at those, looks like everybody who is on was here for that. So we have certainly a quorum there. Uh, were there any requests, any questions or requests for edits to the minutes from November? Mm -hmm. All right. If not, do we have a motion on the minutes? I moved. All right. Uh, all in favor of approving the November minutes? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Minutes are approved. And with that, we move to our final portion of the <laughs> evening, which is opportunity for any public comment on general matters of the zoning board. Um, Charles is still correct that we do not have any other members of the public waiting to speak. No, we, we don't have um, any members of the public that is waiting to speak, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and, um, all right. Under, under number four, under other business, um, I think it's on your agenda. It, it's on mine. I hope it's not. It wasn't omitted from yours. But approval of meeting dates for 2021 should be the next item under other business. I don't know if, oh. it's, if it's on your. Agenda. I didn't have that on what I was looking at, but uh, um, I, oh yeah, I know what happened. I did submit a um, updated agenda to reflect that um, approval ah. of meeting dates. Okay. So approval of meeting date for uh, the year 2021. Okay, and and do we have that document? Well, I mean, it's essentially our standard calendar, right? Just with some shifts for the meeting dates is um, and I seem to not have mine with me, but I, I'm sure I have it here. The meeting date for um, this for 2021 are as follows, and I'll just quickly read through them. And it's um, January 25th, which is today, then February 22nd, March 22nd, April 26th, May 24th, June 28th, July 26th, August 23rd, September 27th, October 25th, November 22nd. And I think it's only December, which is not reflecting the fourth Monday. December is uh, meeting is showing us um, December 20th, which is um, December 20th. Is, uh, is December 20th is the third Monday. <laughs> December 20th is the third Monday, and that's the only uh, deviation from the uh, typical fourth Monday. Um, there's not a break in, in the meeting dates, as um, usually by it reaches down to July or August, we usually have um, a lapse in um, representation for probably two or three months. Yeah. So, um, if there's a need to, um, to reschedule any of those dates in the time, comes um, the 
can be done by motion, but um, okay. Those are so for right now, dates. right now we just need a motion to approve those dates. I make motion to approve the dates. I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. 2021 meeting dates are approved and. Uh, Charles, I'll ask you for help since you're looking at a, an updated uh, agenda compared to what I had. Is there anything else in other business that we needed to cover? Uh, no, that should be it. Okay. That should be it. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, we will adjourn for this evening and we will, uh, in addition to whatever new applications are on the agenda for next month, we'll pick up the public meeting for this application. Just so thank um, just as a way of information, just to let you know, I think this is our last month with Julie. Um, oh. Our able and very efficient <laughs> minute take secretary, she will, this will be her last minute, um, her last meeting with us. Is, I'm correct, Ju Julie, is that correct? Um, I'm not sure, Charles. I'm here until they find a replacement for me. Oh, so I, I, spoke, I spoke with a turn. Oh, I'm, I'm afraid I spoke with a turn there, Julie. I, I will leave that to you to make your own announcement when the time oh, no. comes. <laughs> no, that's fine. It might be my last one, but it's been a pleasure you know, getting to know all of you if it is. Okay. Well, likewise, thank you very much for all your help and assistance. And uh, um, for us, we hope that we'll see you next month. But uh, for, if it, it turns out better for you that uh, you're, you're not here, then uh, <laughs> we wish you all the best. Thank you. And you as well. All right. Uh, well, with that, um, we will adjourn for our January meeting. And again, thank you for everyone for your input and participation. And we will pick up discussions next month. Thank you very much. Good All night. right, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.